Well, hello and welcome once again to my studio out here in the summer house in my garden. I'm Alan Casey, I'm a colour pencil artist and I love walking. Now the video you're about to see, we're going to go back to medieval times. It's a lovely walk in Suffolk. It's going from Santon Downen and we're heading over to Brandon head to Wheaton Castle and Grimes Graves and we're going to have a look inside Grimes Graves and it's a circular walk we'll head back down along the river the little ooze so we're following that inner circle and there's lots of wildlife to see so sit back and I hope you enjoy it pastures, vast open spaces and big skies, and magnificent views. We have Finland, interspersed with dikes and cuts, and Broadland, man-made from peat to heat. Its 90 mile coastline is exposed to easterly winds, and in the north, wild marsh bordered land has splits of sand and shingle. We have Breckland with its woodland walks, and Heathland and grassland. There are medieval relics throughout the counties and numerous tales and legends to tell. Welcome to Tales from the Footpath. On this walk we go back to East Anglia's prehistoric and medieval past. down the footpath and follow the course of the river. Until the middle of the 18th century, Breckland was a dry, treeless and uncultivated area and prone to sandstorms. One particular storm, the Great Sand Flood of 1668, blew sand from Lake and Heath Warren for about 8 kilometres almost covering Santon down and completely damming the little ooze. Close to the river we pass a meadow which is currently being restored to traditional grazing. As you can see from this signpost, there are numerous footpaths to explore in the area. Are we continuing along the footpath right beside the river, but during the summer months be careful. 
because the nettles grow knee high. We're in springtime and the spring flowers are around. Well, here we are walking on the little loose path. Beautiful river, nice and quiet at the moment. Apart from the odd duck making a fair bit of noise. It's uh, in May, so we've got a fair bit of May blossom around as well. Very picturesque this time of year. We're going to walk along this river bank for about a mile before we get to Brandon. Of course, any riverside walk wouldn't be complete without the glimpse of a mallard or the occasional dragonfly. The first dragonfly I've seen so far today. Some of these scenes are really beautiful with the, the river and the lovely meadows right beside it. But there isn't some cattle that around. I did see a woolly one a bit further back. But uh, I can just imagine Constable or Cotman painting these scenes way back in the early days. These are Canada geese. They're obviously set up residence on this part of the river and they're delight to see. Now this section of the river opens up and you get delightful views all around you. Just to the right of us, you can see Scots pines, planted after the old wildwood was cut down by prehistoric man. And if you're lucky, looking across the other side of the river, into some other woodland, you might just get a glimpse of a monk jack deer or a roe deer. I think we're fairly close to Brandon now. The other side of the river we've got a bit more of um, sort of housing developments. And here the odd dog or two barking. So I shouldn't be very long before we get, get to Brandon. Sounds like a fight going on with two dogs. Well, I hardly think that all those babies are hers. I think it must be a good 12 babies there. I can see two more females coming over towards her. Perhaps uh, she's just a guardian keeping an eye on them for them.
Well, we've now left the tranquility of the lovely Little Ouse River and we reach the hubbub of Brandon, a noisy little town with quite a few cars whizzing by you as you go down the streets. As you look at some of the gable ends of the buildings, you see a Dutch influence and quite an old ancient town. There's quite a lot of old buildings around to look at. I for one will be quite pleased to get out of town and back on my walk. We're here at the head of the navigation section of the Little Ouse River and if you want, if you've got a boat, you can go all the way down to the Great Ouse. We're now left Brandon, very very noisy town with all the traffic and we're now crossed over the railway line and going down Fengate Drove, just past the small industrial estate and hopefully in a moment we'll be out on the uh, footpath again. That little nosy bunch was another group of Canada geese flying over. And as you see from this delightful scenery, we're back into the countryside and open marshland, complete with swans and cattle. Well, after leaving the marshes, we eventually pass by some delightful thatched cottages and of course the village sign of Wheating. We're heading towards Wheating Castle and the church. Unfortunately Wheating Castle isn't a castle at all, it's a fortified manor house. Built around 1130 by Hugh de Play, a tenant of the powerful William de Warren, the Earl of Surrey. All that remains of the castle now is just rugged grey stone walls. It's difficult to imagine what it must have looked like during the 12th century. It uh, comprised of around about two floors. The bottom one was used for storage, and the upper one provided the main accommodation. Well, this lovely Rantard church is said to date from the 12th century. If my memory serves me correctly, uh, I believe it's round towers are Saxon and square towers are Norman. Well, this delightful church of St Mary's was practically rebuilt by the Victorians in 1868. Well, after leaving Wheaton Castle, we continue along arable land through Home Farm and passing these delightful little piglets. Well, 
Well, our journey now continues along a green track, and in the distance, this bunch of trees is known as Shadwell's Plantation. It commemorates the memory of Thomas Shadwell, a poet who lived in Wheating, but died in 1691. As my journey continued through the trees, I was very fortunate to catch a glimpse of a monk jack deer and her little baby deer. A very rare sight indeed. Well, I've just passed through a heavy downpour, typical of Norfolk weather. Dry one minute, wet the next. And we're heading towards Grimes Graves. And these mysterious lumps and bumps in the grass actually represent one of Europe's largest prehistoric flint mines, dug out by Neolithic man some 4,000 years ago. He didn't have the tools that we have today, he would have dug them out using flint axes and possibly deer antlers. I'm about to descend 30 feet into one of the shafts. And inside there are seven chambers. Now the flints from here were highly prized and were possibly used for arrowheads and flint axes. It was believed at some time that all these holes were graves and they were possibly dug out by a pagan god called Grim, hence the name. Or Grimes Graves. Well, we've now left Grimes Graves and I'm back going down the woodland track back towards Santon Downen and our way home. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and wasn't that lovely little monk jack deer, superb. I was very, very lucky just to watch it coming through the woodland, following its mum, and gently walking along behind her across the footpath. I could see the cars in the background on the back main road behind, but it didn't seem to be deterred by that. And although I stood dead still, I was standing in the middle of the track, um, but it didn't sort of take a lot of notice on me. But um, I hope you come along and follow that walk. Many thanks and I hope you see you on the next video. Thank you.